Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chonky Boy Show and Tell. This is the show where our friend Chonk here brings out something to share with us, and we discuss. What do you think, Chonk? Maybe one of these episodes you'll let me bring something out to show and tell? No? Never? Anyway, I'm Gene, your host, and with me, of course, is our favorite Chonky Boy. But before we get started today, I would like to thank the sponsor of this episode, and that... Wait... We do have a sponsor for this episode, don't we? Really? I thought we had one. Huh, that's too bad. I'll have to be sure to find someone for next episode. Anyway, what do you have for us today, Chunk? Hey, boy! Have you been into my whiskey cabinet? We talked about this, remember? Yes, we did. I said don't get into my whiskey cabinet. No, I did not say you could help yourself to whatever you liked. We talked about this, and I said no. You really don't remember that, huh? Somehow I don't believe you. Well, I approve of your selection at least, since this is one of my favorites too. I didn't know you liked this one, boy. Wait a minute. Are you even old enough to drink this? How old are you? Six? That's way too young. We're going to have to put this away. Bay, take the bottle away. I hope you brought a backup plan for today's show. (coughs) All right. Cat ears are different. I forgot about that. Wait, so how old would that make you in human years? Oh, wow. You're even just a tiny bit older than I am then. I do apologize. Go right ahead, sir. (coughs) Yeah, you're right. We should probably give a little bit of background for our viewers just in case they don't know what they're looking at. This is a bottle of Talisker 10-year-old single malt scotch. Talisker is a distillery in Scotland on the Isle of Skye, which produces malt whiskey. This particular bottling is their classic offering, which is pretty widely available, more or less at... What, you don't think they know what whiskey is? No, maybe not everyone does. You're probably right. Well, just in case there are any viewers out there who are not familiar with what whiskey is, whiskey is basically boiled beer, to put it crudely. I realize that's an oversimplification, but I think it's at least helpful in getting the basic idea across. Anyway, whiskey begins with grain, in this case malted barley, which is fermented and turned into a beer. This beer is then taken and put into a still, a vessel which is typically made of copper, and boiled. Distillation takes advantage of the fact that water and alcohol boil at two different temperatures, since the boiling temperature of water is actually higher than the boiling temperature of alcohol. So the still is heated to the lower boiling point of alcohol, which turns it into vapor, and it rises up, travels through the copper pipe, cools down, condenses back into a liquid, and is collected in wooden barrels, which are usually made of oak. Then the barrels containing the newly made whiskey are set aside to age, generally for several years or more, during which time the whiskey extracts flavors from the oak barrels and undergoes other flavor changes as a result of the aging process. The whiskey in this particular bottle has been aged for a minimum of 10 years. So what do you think, Chonk? Are you going to pour us a glass? Oh, Bay's going to do it. Hey, watch it there, Bay. Our producer, Bay, recently bought an old crane game from an arcade at an auction, and he's been modifying and repurposing it for use in the show, mostly to help us move props on and off the stage. Uh, careful. Yes, yes, we don't have a stage, we have a tabletop, I know. Sorry. (laughs) Easy, Bay. Whoa. He's having fun with that thing, isn't he? (laughs) Easy. 
careful. Uh, anyway, apparently he seems to have formed the cabinet into a crude producer's booth to work in. You know, I could probably pour this more quickly myself. Okay, fine, Bay. Go ahead. Careful, easy bay. Watch it there, bay. Whoa, wait. <sighs> nope. Hey. <sighs> well, I guess that worked. Okay, I should probably go over the whiskey drinking process for anyone new to whiskey. Uh, what's this? Oh, you brought a book? Learn to drink whiskey in 10 easy steps, huh? Third edition. Tell me you didn't pay money for this. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we can at least see what it has to say. Uh, let's see here. Uh, step one. The glass must be clean, so pour a little bit of whiskey into the glass, swirl it around, and throw it on the ground. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're not gonna be doing that, because the stuff isn't cheap. Hey! Boy! I said no! You're not the one who paid for this. And you know you're not gonna be the one cleaning it up. Yeah, I understand the book told you to do that. Uh, Moving on. Uh, step two. It's very important to introduce yourself to the whiskey before drinking it. You should treat it like a stranger you're meeting for the first time, or maybe a friend or family member you haven't seen in years. You should remember that although you may want to get to know the whiskey, the whiskey might not be open to getting to know you, at least not right away. So you need to introduce yourself to it slowly. And how do you acquaint yourself with a new whiskey? I'm glad you asked. In a similar way to how humans might shake hands and introduce themselves to one another, you introduce yourself to a whiskey by nosing it. Well, I see what you're saying, but I don't think I actually agree that nosing is just a pretentious way to say smelling. There is a subtle difference in my opinion. Well, it's because nosing is something you always do actively and intentionally, while smelling is something that I would say is done more passively. You would nose a whiskey or a wine. You smell a fart. Smelling is just something that happens to you. Yeah, maybe. But I don't think I would put it that way. Junk was just pointing out that in cat culture, they also introduce themselves to each other in this way. Apparently by nosing each other's butts, as he puts it. Yeah, I'm not sure that's an analogy I would prefer, but... If it helps you, then fine. Anyway, let's keep moving. It's a good idea when nosing a whiskey to keep your mouth open. It helps keep the alcoholic strength from overwhelming your nose and gives you a better chance to detect aromas other than that of pure alcohol. Uh, the book here also provides a diagram showing the whiskey nosing process, so I guess I'll try and demonstrate to you what they have illustrated here. Uh, here goes. Hello. How are you? Pleased to meet you. How's the family? Yes, terrible weather we've been having lately. You look good. Have you lost weight? No. 
Yes, I agree, this seems overly theatrical. The point I think they're trying to make here is that you want to smell your whiskey first as a way of getting to know it. Uh, okay, next step. Depending on your taste, the whiskey might be too strong straight out of the bottle. If desired, reduce the strength with a little water before drinking. Right, so before you drink it, it's perfectly acceptable to add some water to your whiskey. It's probably better to add a little at a time and take tiny sips in between just to make sure you don't drown it. Uh, hey, Bay, do we have any water? Come on, Bay, be careful. Bay, I think you need some more practice with this thing. You're making a mess. All right, moving on again. Next step. When you sip the whiskey, only take a little at a time, maybe a half teaspoon or so. And once the whiskey is in your mouth, keep it in your mouth for several seconds. Be sure to chew it thoroughly before swallowing. Okay, ready, boy? Here we go. So, what's it taste like? It's customary for whiskey drinkers to provide some tasting notes as a rough way to communicate the flavors they're experiencing to others. For Talisker 10, we're definitely getting some vanilla and light smoke on the nose, and a little caramel, maybe a touch of fruit, like apple. You, you think a slight blueberry note? Eh, okay. Some peppery bacon? Sure, why not? And a nice mix of sweet and savory notes on the attack and a lightly smoky finish. Sure. Right. And to those of you who think whiskey tasting notes such as these are a little fanciful or overly imaginative or maybe just simply made up, I guess we have only one response. How dare you? So in conclusion, I think this is delicious. I'd give it four out of five stars. What do you think, Chunk? Good. We're in agreement then. For me, Talisker 10 has long been one of my favorite whiskeys. The first time I tried it, the aroma of dry smoke was so pronounced and unfamiliar that I still remember it. And even though I can't really recover the newness of that first time, it remains one of my favorites, and one that, to this day, hasn't disappointed me. Hey, boy, stop that. There are several other versions of Talisker out there, and maybe we'll get to some of them someday. Many of them I like a lot, although there are a few expressions I'm not crazy about. Hey! Come on, boy. What did I just tell you? Please stop doing that. Ugh. I hate it when his inhibitions are lowered. Hey, where are you going? Boy, what are you doing now? <sighs> Great. Now the boy has started a fight with our producer. Come on, guys, cut it out. Well, sadly, I don't think we're going to get much more out of him today, so I guess we're going to have to wrap this up. Thanks again for joining us, and I hope you'll return for the next episode of Jonky Boy Show and Tell. Bye. Ooh.